Yeah, I um, if you want to remove somebody from your environment, apparently all you do is you just write their name on a piece of paper and freeze it in the freezer. And apparently within six weeks, they're out of your life. So got anyone like that? We could try that. Yeah, my, um, my office, I have all these crystals on the directed towards my neighbors across the street mm -hmm. that this really bad guy lived there. In fact, he's wanted and one of the most wanted. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Seriously? He, he's criminal. on the most wanted yeah. list. <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah. He's, he's wanted by uh, the state of California now. Oh. Yeah, so they must know something's going on. Yeah, did he, did he, he use a plastic straw? Oh, well. He's gone now, so we will not talk about him. But you think the crystals helped? <laughs> yeah. It took a while. Yeah. But, I, um, you know, I, think I mean, I was is... afraid to go in my front yard, you know, because he would say such horrible things. Yeah, there's a lot of them out there. I, I did something similar. We had a front neighbour that on the property in front of us, and I I just d interviewed somebody on grids, a crystal grids, and they, they mm -hmm. actually said what you need to do is a black crystal arrow towards the person. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. And um, so I did it, and, I, and they said you've got to put it like um, 10 centimetres down, like do an arrow. So I went out the front and I dug my little arrow and I did it. And, and sure enough, within a month, they had sold the house and moved. But then yeah. I forgot but then I forgot to dig them up and the next people moved in and they moved out within six weeks. So I then, re that's when I realized, oh my God, I forgot to dig them up. So I went and dug them up and brought them. They're very powerful, you know? Wow. So that, that kind of surprised me. It's a shame too, because I kind of like the next people. <laughs> oh, <laughs> maybe they'll come back now that you dug them up. We've, we've got a nice uh, South African family who just escaped the riots. The writing over yes. in South Africa now, so amazing. Mm. So, um, do you do you guys perform any prayers or now that you've got a psychic on board as well, a cleansing rituals or any kind of uh, spellcraft prior to entering a haunted dwelling? A lot of people do. I've noticed they. Mm -hmm. I know the dust guys do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we pretty much leave it up to the individual. Um, we do. Um, do a protection uh -huh. individually. Um, mm -hmm. uh, there, we don't do it formally because I think everybody can take care of themselves better than I can take care of them. Mm -hmm. And I can usually put out something around a group. But the only the only place where I've ever ever felt threatened was the farm. Well, that was probably military or I, UFO. Or I, it was a combo. That place was just horrible. Yeah. But, I but, never stepped foot on that property again. Really? Because it, a shed? It, it, it had a shed or a, a barn that was a bit odd. The, the, the property, property was the odd. property. The whole property was odd. And the house was um, a little frightening. Yeah. It, wow. This place is right close to the military base, mm -hmm. and um, this is more UFO stuff, but we had missing time. Missing time, uh, being transported over long distances without... You're tramping through the woods, and you come out a half a mile where from where you should be. Oh. Yeah, right. and I actually have a video of us going through the woods, and this was with Chase Clotesy. Yeah, Klotsky. Uh, Klotsky, or uh, from Mufon. Mufon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they had come to investigate the area because of uh, sightings, mm -hmm. and we were tromping around in the woods, and um, we came back from the property, and you have to cross a ditch mm -hmm. to get out to the road where, where we were, mm -hmm. but when we went back, back we crossed the ditch once and ended up right where we started. Mm. And it's all on video, and we never crossed the ditch the second time. Wow. Yeah. One of the team disappeared? Yes. And you could hear him. He was two feet behind me, and he was just gone. So there was, like, some time-spatial stuff going on as well, obviously. Yes. Mm. 
maybe it, some uh, portals. I don't know, but y'all saw a bunch of men. Oh, well, the, the, the thing that scared me was um, we were lock, walking around along this dirt road and I shine. We were under these big high tension power lines. Mm -hmm. And I just, I had a high powered flashlight and I just kind of shoved it into the woods to take a look. And I saw a sort of grayish balloon sitting in the tree. Yeah. Go, That's wow. a funny place for a balloon to be. Mm. And then it rotated and the big black eyes were staring back at me. Whoa. So you might've been grays. Yes. Huh? I'm yeah. almost sure that's what it was because mm. they were sighted several times that night. And the same time that Doug saw this balloon head alien, whatever, uh, one of the other guys saw a black ship, you know, the, the big back black mm. dog. It's Irish, I think. Yep. Mm -hmm. Didn't you see some men with guns? Yes. Well, that's what turned us around. Um, we saw <laughs> guys with flashlights. <laughs> Yeah, flashlights and guns. So we decided we'd go back to the uh, the plantation house, and they were dressed like hunters, but there was something odd about. Them. Oh no, that was uh, what they saw when we weren't there. Uh huh. Yeah, they, uh, they were clearing land behind all this, mm -hmm. and there were pickup black pickup trucks spaced evenly along the side of this road mm -hmm. with men in black standing next to them all facing in one direction wow yeah that's that's not obvious <laughs> yeah no well they had hunter hats on didn't they no oh that time okay i it forgot in black yeah yeah like yeah. paramilitaries i look. usually stayed exactly. in the house yeah yeah i'm not walking out there with the snakes and jumping. well that house was just creepy it was the, what about this, the house? Is it in in um, close by, or did you travel to it? No, it's uh, in St. Paul, North Carolina. It's about uh, 40, 50 minutes from where we are. It's out in the middle of nowhere. But actually. it's adjacent to a military base. It's property. It's about five miles from uh, a big military base. Mm. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the norm, isn't it? <laughs> yeah but the house itself acted like it was haunted but i wonder if that was spillage from the energy outside i don't know but doors would slam mm -hmm. lights would start swinging and swaying it was uh crazy yeah. i had little somebody had stacked some spindles for the back of a chair in a corner mm -hmm. and while, while i was standing there looking at them they started spinning out oh. across the floor definitely yeah makes no sense well you know, is there any metal in them or is it just wood or just wood, wood. wow old chairs too yeah so i don't know um you know it's, it seemed like we were made to see yeah. whatever uh we wanted to or came into our minds and we saw it mm -hmm. somebody was messing with our minds oh yeah it's they're very good at that. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, what did you call it? A mind? Well, uh, kind of a, a mind. Well, they kind of hijack your mind. It's a mind yeah. jack. Yeah. They, they mind jack you. Yeah. And uh, even, and it's awful because you think you're a stronger person. When that happens to you the first time, you kind of think, why, you know, like, as I said, when my first contact, it was actually with Grace. That was the first contact I had. And it was on the top of a mountain, Springbrook Mountain here in southeast Queensland. And um, I was at a C5. And uh, do you know Dr. Stephen Greer? No. He's um, he's a medical doctor who's gone into meditation and he's he's actually investigating more free energy and the suppression of it. He's actually an advisor to the Trump administration. Wow. Yeah. And um, but he's he's quite um, he kind of took the stuff that Heineck did in the 60s and extended it. There's a mm -hmm. show that's just been on TV called The UFO Bl Blue Project or something. Project, Project Blue Book. Blue, Blue Book, and it was um, the, the main character in that is Heineck, 
who mm -hmm. is this, this scientist. By the way, it didn't do him. If you've actually read up on how you'd understand that they completely um, destroyed his character in that series. It's not how he, he should not have been portrayed as they portrayed him. Um, but he basically created uh, the CE5 scale, which is one to five, CE5 one to five, which is the, the levels of contact. So basically CE1 might just be you see a craft in the sky, where CE5 is actual contact, which is physical contact, telepathic communication. And then you go, and what Dr. Greer has done is he took the first five, he extended them to CE5, Seven, so and added two more levels of contact, um, which is uh, the actual abduction, and yeah. Anyway, I'll let you look into that yourself. And um, so he then developed um, the the meditation protocol because, being a medical doctor, he'd also done to to go through and to survive as a student. He'd been doing meditation. Um, classes for people on the side um, and he realized the connection between meditation and supernatural and how it how it opens up something and so what he then developed was based on the c5 protocols he just he defy he defined this process of meditation in certain locations in group environments with positive attitude which then attracts contact and um and basically all over the world there's groups and we're called CE5 groups and we meet periodically and we pretty much freeze our butts off for about four hours on a mountainside and, you know, things happen, you know. It's it's interesting though, um, they happen more regularly when you've got the same people and there's somebody in your group who is sensitive or, or has some psychic ability, then it increases um, exponentially the contact that you have. So... Um, Anyway, I was actually on Springbrook Mountain when uh, Dr. Greer visited Australia back in 2013, August 2013, and I was part of the group that looked after him while he was here. And um, so my, my, my duties on the night, we had about 300 people meditating on this mountaintop. In, there was, we had about five circles of people uh, so normally we, you make up what they call the sacred circle, which I think is stolen from Wicca. Um, and it's basically you sit around, it, you put all your camp chairs out in a circle and you meditate. But in this case, because there were so many people that wanted to see him because he originated this, this protocol, um, we had that many people on there. And because there were that many people, it attracted everything. It was the most phenomenal night. I, you won't believe, I can show you the photos. You won't believe the photos we got that night. And I was um, patrolling around the group with um, my buddy, because you always have a buddy on those nights. And uh, I had just met up with my buddy because he we'd kind of gone opposite and we'd cross and go back just to make sure everyone's okay. And at one point when we stopped, I kind of turned around and looked out and then, sure enough, about three, three or four meters in front of us, where Dave and I had stopped, there was a, there was about a group of three grey aliens just enjoying the night, just looking out at the stars and chilling out and listening to Dr. Greer because he was actually singing this Indian puja, which is the beginning of the meditation process. And um, I don't know if you know what a puja is. It's um, a mantra, and he'd been doing it for about a minute. And it was at the very beginning of the meditation for everybody. So if you can imagine 300 people all meditating while this amazing mantra was being done, this is, and the whole, it felt like a big dome was placed over us. Like, so we're all inside this, this zone. It was just amazing feel. So anyway, so I'm turning, I was talking to Dave, and then I just turned, and sure enough, right there, group of them. And then I started looking around and they're everywhere. We, the whole group, the whole group of people were surrounded by grey aliens. It was everywhere. I've never been in anything like that before in my life. Probably never will again. So, and that was my first contact. And there was one, after about a minute of Dave and I kind of enjoying like this, you feel amazing. You know, you're at, probably you're at the point where you think you cannot feel healthier if you tried, like when you're with them, because you're just, they make you feel like it's best you could actually feel. 
Um, and that might be the mind jacking as well. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but about an hour, a minute or two minutes in, you know, you know how we usually the denial creeps into us, like, am I really seeing this? So mm -hmm. telepathically, I was actually saying to myself, God, am I really seeing this? And sure enough, the closest one, uh, Gray to me, turned around, looked straight at me and telepathically said, yes, Sharon, you're here. This is the moment and this is your message. And just, yeah, so I've never had experienced anything quite like that before. And up until that point, I wasn't, uh, I knew that, that there was strangeness in our world, but I, you could not have called me a believer. I was always a sceptic. And that was the moment that changed it all. I hadn't drunk, hadn't taken drugs. I had spent the day in a lecture theatre um, listening to Dr Greer. I had taken no substance, which could have altered my reality. I wasn't tired. Yeah, so from my perspective, yeah, that was that was contact. That was, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I shared it with somebody too, which is wonderful. Yeah, yeah so... But you're right, yeah, the mind, mind jacking or mind whammying or whatever you want to call it is is real. And I think that was a subtle version I experienced that night. The the petrol station mantis, that was a harsh version because that was like, what the hell just happened? I knew something had happened. The good thing is, though, it didn't take my whole memory. It just took the bit where after we would had the interaction, it could have been I he could have taken the whole scenario. Do you know what I mean? He didn't. Yeah. So, I that, mm, and maybe that's what, what a lot of these encounters are. Um, and that's why that's also why I think a lot of the stuff other people hit, like angelic messages and that, are more entity based. I think I think it's all the one and the same. It's energy, entities mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, and it really is just your your own experience being projected in front to make you feel a bit more, you know at ease like I was fully I'd researched ufology up until that point for 10 years so I knew what I knew what a gray alien looked like I had all I understood that they were real you know out of all of the different types of alien entities they were the nicest <laughs> so that's what was presented to me or I don't know but there was a there was a lot there that night. I mean, the whole group, three hundred people meditating on a mountainside, and that the whole group is like a dome, and the, the outside of the dome, every it was surrounded by grey aliens. Wow! Oh, mm. and here. people saw yeah. it. Possible signing, fighting. Not that you'd ever see anyone, you know, declaring that on mainstream TV. <laughs> <laughs> And I do have a theory with the military. I think mm -hmm. they, they've been obviously very aware of ETs for a lot longer than most of us. And I think that's where you get these secret societies. You know, they've obviously been in communication. Maybe they have technology that's 50 years ahead of everybody else. And that's why um, they try to cover up a lot of stuff because they don't want us getting whatever they've got earlier than they want to hand it out. I think they also pick people like Elon Musk to release things um, to us. I don't think uh, people like Elon Musk actually come up with these things. I think they're reverse engineered or they're actually given to us by other entities. And it's uh, supposed to be given to us like, I mean, look at the World Wide Web. Look at the Internet. Boom. Yeah. It wasn't here and then it look at, <laughs> Suddenly, yeah. look at yeah. microwaves. Think about simple things like microwaves. Look at – and – Keep in mind also that a lot of the things that we we deal with on a daily basis, Tesla had had as a patent back in the 20s, but we didn't see any of this stuff until the 80s, 1980s. Mobile phones, you know, mm -hmm. why with it, they've got something now called Wikicity, which is Wi-Fi electricity. You no longer need to plug things in. That's right. It's, look at 5G. This is all elect EMFs. Although I'm a bit worried about EMF, but anyway, mm -hmm. another, another, another subject. So, yeah, there's, I, so I think there is definitely a military agenda, but I think it's more to limit. And it may be maybe this is how it's supposed to be. We're, we're not supposed to be given. I mean, if you look back to 100 years ago, in the last 100 years, 
our civilization had jumped a thousand years in technology mm -hmm. really it's if you go back past uh, if you go back through the the last you know 1900 years not a lot mm -hmm. not a lot happened let's face it <laughs> right and now suddenly in the last 80 80 to 100 year period we're here there's something you know something's I mean, look at computers. They, they've gone from being in a room in the 40s to a, a tiny chip that goes in the back of the phone. Same, same capacity. But, but all these advances, have it made us any better? No. Well, I don't think social media has. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 think, I think getting being able to communicate real the truth of situations is a fantastic thing to have happened because we've, we're now seeing exposure of fake news through the government. I think that's brilliant. However, the downside of social media is, um, I suppose, the spread of conspiracy rather than fact. Um, mm -hmm. Mean-spirited people, uh, people um, suppressing knowledge rather than sharing it. There's a, there's a lot of so you've really got to weigh up does the positive outweigh the negative, and I don't know I don't know how you can like fake news and stuff like that is a real problem, but for every bit of fake news there's there's a citizen reporter out there that's actually getting the truth out. So do we tolerate the fake news? so that, that we can actually get that one piece of news that will, is critical? I don't know. I don't know. We need to keep calling them out at every turn. Yeah. I think, I think basically if, if you're a, a publication like the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, if you get so many strikes against you where you've been proved to be distributing fake news, I think you should not be allowed to have the word news in your title. I think there should be clarifications that if it's proved so many times that you have you are the purveyor of fake news, you should have your license revoked instantly as a news organization. They'll never have it they'll never have it because they're too rich. Like back what in the forties and fifties, Hearst, Randolph Hearst, is that his name? Yep. He owned all the newspapers and he told people what to publish and you know, if you start publishing, he'll put you out of business. Yeah. So. They say the depression in the U.S. was extended by eight years by the president at the time of it. Um, they've actually gone back and done the research, and it was all done via the press, the Washington mm -hmm. and the New York Times, by the way. So those are two publications I would be not supporting in any way, shape. They have... And then, basic, there are so many connections between um, the CIA and mm -hmm. the FBI and um, those two papers as well. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's a there's a lot of rot there in the system. Um, yeah. The only thing that can fix it is allowing multiple um, organisations to report the news and not have a monopoly. And that's the real, you know, basically that then the truth will will out if you've got multiple. And you've currently got that in a way via YouTube, but they're now trying to suppress that. So there's there's a that's the real fight at the moment. But anyway, we'll we'll get back to it. So tell me, what what's your understanding of a poltergeist then? And how does its manifestation differ from that of a normal haunting? Except well, for being targeted all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, you know, uh, starting from the Seaford case up in New Jersey, was it New Jersey? Somewhere. But um, they, they figured out, and this is with the Ryan Research people at Duke University way back when, uh, when they did have a parapsychology department, um, figured out that it was somebody going through some horrific changes, emotional changes, mm -hmm. that they can't express it. So it basically that it has a human element, a living agent. Agent, thank you. Um, and this business is about it being little girls in puberty. It's all over the place. It's how, what's your stress level? Depends on if you can do a polar guys thing. Maybe these people are a little bit more psychic or 
have a little bit more psychic energy. That's what I wanted to say. That's but true. Because look at the Masons. Look at the Masons. Yeah. The they past, use 13 year old girls who are going through puberty to. But it's to not all the sacred stuff. I've, no. actually, I've actually seen it. Uh huh. We while we were on duty. But they say that you can tell the difference between a ghostly thing is because if, let's just say, the teacup's flying through the room, right. it'll be on a smooth floating track if it's a spirit. Really? But if it's a human a human agent doing it, it'll just zip, zip back and then bash. Oh, really? Like, they're more violent. Oh. Mm. What's ever smooth. And uncontrolled. Smooth. Yeah. But, I mean, they've been people that it's rained in their house and they've attributed back to people yeah. that usually when you explain what's going on to a client they say oh i'm doing this oh my goodness mm. and actually the polar geist thing stops the usual run of a polar geist is about three weeks maybe a month two months that's and then long. Away. no because how long do you are you in a really anxious state What's that girl's name? Um, she's in prison now. But she was had a lot of polar geist activity going around. But she was faking like half of it. Oh. But the other half was real. <laughs> yeah. You she know, around? Well, once they had her on cameras and stuff, she had to produce. And so she did fake some. But then there was a lot of real evidence recorded with her. What's her name? It's a shame, isn't it? Because everything is then tarnished with the same brush. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's unfortunate, too, that um, there's kind of a fine line between uh, the manifestation of a ghost moving an object and a human doing it mm -hmm. um, and not being quite able to determine the difference. Yeah, poltergeists don't make things disappear. They yeah. don't borrow objects. And like giving back to you a couple of years later. Gosh, I've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a spiritual thing or entity. Yeah. So, so explain explain my car keys, please. <gasps> yes. <laughs> no. No, that is an entity. <laughs> yeah. It's either you or an entity. Well, yeah. mostly it's always me, but um, yeah. occasionally there is I know for a fact that this is Again, this hasn't happened lately, but in the early, my early years, I know for a fact I, I would have put something down when I was living on my own and I'd come back and find it in a completely different place. Mm -hmm. And I could never explain that. It wouldn't be far from it. It would be I like... I walk around the house and say, can I have my keys back to anybody that's listening? And mm -hmm. after a while, you'll find them. Well, you know, back the, well, the might walk back would walk around praying to St. Anthony <laughs> yeah. to return them. Oh, yes. Is he the, the finder of lost things? Yeah. Supposedly. Or maybe it was the ghost that finally said, I've had enough here. Maybe it's the ghost of St. Anthony. Now, I, I, now, I've experienced that firsthand. I was fix, fixing up an apartment in New York City mm -hmm. to live in. And I was laying tile in a hall. What is your understanding of the poltergeist and how does its manifestation differ from that of a normal haunting? Um, Are you there? Yeah, she's there. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought she already asked us that. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. We, you, uh, Doug was just kind of wrapping up on that, that, uh, that question. Hmm. Um. <laughs> oh, God. Can't remember? Well, the thing is, is that uh, a, 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 a regular haunting uh, is by a um, spirit, or an, some, entity of some an entity that has passed on, whereas I, I believe a poltergeist is a living agent. Yeah. You were, you were going to give us an example. You had just said something about That's renovating true. your New York apartment. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, I had laid down uh, a tile knife and a pair of shears to, and went to eat lunch. When I came back, they were gone. Okay, so I had to go to the hardware store and purchase two more. 
Well, um, there was a lot of stuff going on in the house, and uh, me and my ex-wife decided we're getting out of here. Mm-hmm. And on the day we were moving out, I went into the bathroom in the morning, and the tile knife was on the left-hand side, and the shears were sitting on the right-hand side of the sink. So they didn't want you to stop packing, not pack them. <laughs> No, I, I think they kept, she kept stealing things, trying to make us go away, and then return them when we were leaving. Wow. So she, she, was she really wasn't keen on you. Did, I wonder if you did it to the next people, too. Did you ever follow up? No. No. When we left, I, I turned my back to that place and left. Mm. Too was many bad any, things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was there any, did you actually see anything, or was it just the object? It was mostly the objects, and um, the outline of her furniture kept reappearing, even after using paint primer and everything else to try to get rid of it. It would, it would go away for about two weeks and then re- return. That's oh, that's creepy. <laughs> uh, had the had to have the floors refinished in the living room because I kept smelling um, urine, Ooh. like deathbed. Yeah. Oh. Um, right. So had had the floor refinished, and six weeks later it came back again. So oh. nothing we could do could. Uh, it was time to leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, let somebody else deal with it. Hey, so exactly. but Jay, what, what kind of uh, training uh, does a ghost, a paranormal investigator, undergo? Do you do you receive a like a license, like a private detective, like a paranormal oh, investigator? I I wish you would keep a lot of bumpkins out. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. But um, basically, we've done our training through uh, the Ryan Research Center in Durham, North Carolina. Oh, yes, I know them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, of course you do, yeah. Um, and I've been taking classes from people all over the world who are trained parapsychologists. Mm. Yeah, but it's not just the parapsychology side of it that um, we have to train people in how to use equipment, how to set up equipment, um, which is not the realm of parapsychology. No. Uh, no, they're into ESP. Yeah, but how is how do we get um, EVP but through ESP? So yeah. there is a cross-linking of those things. Um there is no license, um, and there's no formal training. Uh, but our the no license part scares me the most. Our investigators are well trained. Um, we also started a program here in our area called Investigate the Investigators. Oh yeah, that sounds interesting. I thought I sent that to you. So basically, we ask. Um, the people who are to potentially to uh, become a client to mm-hmm. check into the background of those people that are coming into their house to investigate. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Are there, is there a criminal background? Is there um, shadiness at all to this group? Who are these people? Who and- are these people? Mm-hmm. And, you know, um, a lot of people, They've been trained on the internet or by ghost hunters or by Zach Baggins. And they have little or no experience. They have none, you know. And you really can't, unless you try to find the truth online, you're going to find 75% is baloney and there's 25% of some really great people out there. Yeah, it's it's the same here in Australia. Yeah. But one thing we have we have started doing is I have started doing background checks on our potential clients. Yes. Because okay. we almost got in the middle of a drug house. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, the lady was obviously high, but there was a person wandering around the vicinity who kept coming in and out, and um, he looked like he was on crack or who knows what he was Something. on? Something, but her house had been broken into so many times, and like it's probably your roommate, lady. Yeah, or she they got, know, or they know that she's got drugs there. So 
Um, they're not hurt. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. We it are, was kind of scary. We are getting more and more um, protecting of ourselves as well yeah. as the clan. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. Mm. Yeah. Well, we always tell people we're not scared of the dead. It's the living people that scare us. Yeah. It's, there is a there is a correlation between drugs and uh, people having um, experiences as well, though. So you, that's oh, also yeah. something you've got to kind of uh, take take on board, I suppose, as investigators. Do we do a preliminary questionnaire that sometimes these things I ask the same question fifty different times, <laughs> and some of the truth comes out, but we were not actually prepared for this woman at all. Yeah. You know, because she seemed very, you know, I messed up. Nope. I didn't pick it up. <laughs> as soon as we arrived, we were all looking at each other like, uh oh. Yeah. Yeah. So now I've been doing background checks on people. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a, a, a wise move coming forward. Yeah. It, also, you don't want to be caught in somebody's house. You know, especially if they're, they're not an honest person, they might say say that you're there under different pretense. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, you don't put yourself in that situation. I'd, exactly. I, in fact, I'd probably, if I were you, I'd get them to sign something before you even set foot on the proper, on their property in future. We do. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's one of our things that we, you know, always get permission, get signed releases and things. Excellent. So if the cops do show up, we've got this paper. Yeah. Know. Oh, it sounds like you've got it got it in hand. So I, I, I feel like I need to ask the next question to Doug, which is, have you ever been injured by a ghost? <laughs> <laughs> if yes, how did it happen? Because you seem to be the one that gets the chairs pulled out and <laughs> or the door the door slammed I, into you. So <laughs> Yeah, I've I've never really been seriously hurt by anything. You know, the, the nurse ratchet that ran through that the Aunt Willard. Um, you just get pushed, shoved, and... Well, I yeah, I've gotten pushed, uh, fortunately, going upstairs instead of yeah. downstairs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. I got, that was twice in one in the same house. Yeah, that house is strange. It yeah. probably, you think it has some kind of vortex in it? Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> But it, it was, it was strange. Yeah. It's when we were doing something, we were like closing everything when we're leaving and we were saying that, you know, we really wish you don't belong here anymore. This is not your house. And what did the guy say? EVP? Yeah, he was, he was mocking her mm -hmm. and repeating what she was saying, mm -hmm. but in this nasty tone. Yeah. Mm. Strange. Yeah. So. You're so, still here. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's hurt me really bad. No. <laughs> She's falling asleep on us. Let, let's hope it continues. So now, um, again for Doug, uh, when it comes to equipment, is it tell us the number one bit of equipment that you will always take with you on a paranormal investigation? And also tell us the most useless bit of equipment that no one should ever buy, but everyone does. <laughs> Oh. Uh, uh, let's see. The I just got a new device that um, it will show um, EMF, EV, uh, EV um, and uh, microwave, all sorts of energies, uh, and tell you what is generating it. Um, give you a readout. It'll give me a, a readout, and it's it's got a data logger on it, so you can prove to the client that this is what's causing your problem. This your refrigerator, your dishwasher, your your fuse box. It, it's a great device. Now, as far as what not to bring, what's well, the device called? What's that one called? Uh yeah, I've. <laughs> Don't make him go get it. <laughs> I, I can't remember right this minute. Um, uh, it, it is considered an uh, an EMF meter, uh, and I think it's an EQ three hundred. 
I think. Is it a Zoom? No, uh, that's a that's a recorder. Uh, we do have Zoom recorders. Are they any good? Yes, mm -hmm. we use them all the time. Yeah, that's. I think that's been the standard at most of the ones I've done with other people. I don't have this equipment. I have mag magnetometers, but that's about it. So, um, but they all seem to use the Zoom devices to record e for the EVP. Mm. Yes. Uh, we also use Olympus. Um, the higher the quality, the um, the better the recording. Mm. So um, you don't want to buy something cheap and garbagey. That you don't want to use your cell phone. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the, I think the one thing I would say, don't waste your time with, um, is probably um, the uh, ghost box. Oh, I know. So, Thank uh, you. Well, the ghost box, uh, Jane and I have difference of opinion on whether it works at all. Um, <laughs> but um, it has no correlation to where you're actually investigating, so why bother with it? Mm -hmm. So we, we had one. We got rid of it. We, uh, we call them spirit boxes over here. Yeah. And... Um, I, don't, I can't tell you how many times I've ended up pissing myself laughing at try, uh, listening to a paranormal investigator trying to interpret the spirit box. And yeah. I, I, I actually had the scenario where I was at a jail, another jail. We seem to do a lot of jails over here. <laughs> and there was a group of like 15 of us standing around and the, the thing's going off. And they're saying, oh, did you hear that? That that was a so-and-so. And I'm thinking, no, that was just a really loud beep. They were, But they they were doing their darndest to try and make words out of it. And I'm thinking, no, that's not, that's nothing, you know. Here, it's not, they want here. Try to interpret in real time. Yeah. Uh, that's It's almost impossible to do. And even if you record it, most of it's just gibberish. Yeah. Yeah. But basically, yeah. there's no such thing as a ghost detector, ever. And yeah. ghost box, everybody says, oh, it's so great, but it's never been scientifically tested or proven to work in any which way. Yeah. I usually leave the room when they get the ghost boxes out. And go that, and in the one with the static kiss? Yeah. What's that? Uh, I hate that. But there, there are so many toys out there that these – these people bring into a house and they think they're detecting a ghost. Um, that one with the little lights on top of it. The it, flashlight trick. It's, it's detecting static charge. Well, um, static charge is caused by so many different things. It's not telling you a ghost is there. Uh, yeah, no, I totally uh, agree. Yeah. We, yeah, I've seen it. Honestly, that's that is the bit where I usually leave the group and go and do a little bit of investigating by myself and come mm -hmm. back thirty minutes later, you know. And it, it never seems to satisfy anyone. And there's always you always get an argument with the ghost box because there's always somebody hears something different to somebody else that it's kind of like oh. Oh, so, yeah. interpret an EVP. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah, because mm. I'll hear one thing and Doug hears another, and so I don't help them with the EVP anymore. <laughs> No, uh, and I, I, we try to do is to have a consensus opinion on difficult EVP. Yeah, that's uh, that's the only way you can really do it because I, I agree with you, Jane. I've listened to things and other people have, and I I don't hear it or they don't hear it or we you know the combined. But but some it's like pareidolia, isn't it, on video? Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. Yeah, it's the same Absolutely. thing. Yeah. 